Hello and welcome to Gag of the Millennial. A show where we talk about pop culture, current events, and spill the hot Darjeeling right into your lap. Ooh, scoldy waldy. She's dead. <gasps> She's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone. Hello. Welcome back to a brand new episode of Gag of the Millennial. Hello, hello, hello. It is, well, actually, it hasn't been that long. I keep saying as if yes, like, it's been eight years. It, but this one does feel a bit long since yeah, the last time we filmed. I think it's because, but yeah, yeah well, it was, it's, we're back. Doesn't back matter girls, what we've done. Back at it again, um, just like those slaps. Yeah, we're here to flash up. Tits breasts. <laughs> Mummy's got tits. Mummy's got breasts. Uh. Um, so I do hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful December. It has been quite an intense <laughs> couple of months oh, for us. Yeah. Um, but we are happy that Christmas season is now here. Happy holidays. Obviously, if you don't celebrate of Christmas, course. happy holidays. Um, happy December. But today... We're going to ruin your day. We're going to ruin your day. <laughs> <laughs> So today we are here to talk about some housemates from hell, mm. some landlords from hell, mm. any people we've dealt with over the past. And of course, we're also going to go to Reddit and read some stories out at yes. the end of our own stories yes. to see maybe some, what some of you guys like, have said what's online. The tea? What is the Dash mm. It is a lot. Mm. So, oh my God. So I actually, so I don't have as many personal stories as much as what you do because oh. I, I was quite late to moving out on my own. Now, I didn't, you I'm know. Late. Yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> late. Like I didn't um leave my own home until I was 25 because okay. obviously I was looking after my granddad for a long part of my sort of like early adult life mm-hmm. because he had dementia and Parkinson's. So obviously I didn't leave until I was 25. However... <laughs> you made up for it. So I yes, made up. <laughs> so, where, shall I just start off with the story then? Just, yeah, you go just, first. Shall I just start off with follow that? Up. Okay. So, I moved to London in 2015. Long time ago. It feels like age. I can't believe I've been living in London now for seven years yeah. almost. Like, it's yeah. insane. So originally I um I moved in with my sister. She was like, come to London. There's a long story why I moved in with her, but she was like, come to London, find a job. We can we can get you settled up here. So I, I did that and moved in with her. So very soon after moving to London with my sister, uh, there was a, a room free in Callum, who I live with now, my best friend Callum. He had a room free in his flat that he was sharing with two other people. So I moved in with them. And the first year living together, it was me, Callum and Kieran. We had a wonderful time. Our dynamic, our relationship was just absolutely perfect. I do feel like um, we were very lucky to find people who not necessarily did social media as much because Kieran didn't do social media at all, but like he never thought it was weird. Yeah. He was happily in my videos. I used to make cooking videos of him. We would like make fun videos together. So he was perfect and that was amazing. But one year into us uh, living together, Kieran decided that he wanted to move out. He'd already lived in this house at the time for two years as well because I was a year late. So it was like, fine. He was doing really successful. He's like a private, he flies private jets now around the world and stuff. Like rich people. Exposed. (laughs) Exposed. Um, (laughs) So he was doing really well for himself. So he so he moved out. And at the time, I had a really good friend. And we, I was a bit kind of like, well, we have a room free. Yeah. And I didn't know if I wanted to go through the whole process of trying to get someone to move in. So it's first a- of all, can I just interject there? Because actually your experience of like moving to London and having everyone like be lovely in the house is so rare. Usually yep. you move in and you're like, oh my God, who are these absolute nutcases that I live with? <laughs> and then, but like when you go to meet them, they're like, we are fine, normal people. We are professionals between 24 and 28. And we're yep. all, and then you meet in with them. And they're like, I sacrifice dogs on the weekend. Like, <laughs> they are just insane. So there yeah. you go. <laughs> no, because this thing, when I, when I told people when I first moved to London, how amazing it was my first house experience with like two amazing people. Everyone, yeah. everyone was so shocked that I managed to skip through. Even Callum himself would say all the time that I've like skipped all the hard part yeah. and just gone straight to the good thing. However, when Kira moved out, um, I had a friend at the time who's one of my one of my best friends at that time, um, and I was like, "Well, why don't we? <laughs> I'm triggered. Why don't we?" <laughs> get him to like move in. I was like, what, why don't we get him to move in instead of having to go through the process of like advertising a room, interviewing people, is this a good fit, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. So Callum was a little apprehensive to begin with. He was a bit more sort of like, oh, I don't, and I was like, it'll be fine, girl. We're <laughs> yeah. best friends. Famous it's last words. fine. <clears throat> it was not fine. Now I've kind Spoiler of- alert. <laughs> I've kind of avoided talking about this situation mm-hmm. on the internet. I've been like, Do you know what? I can't be bothered with it. Recently I found out he had been um, Nefarious Talking about me to someone who he should not be talking to me about mm-hmm. I have been like, do you know what, fine We will tell the story If if that's how If that's going. the tea, then if you have to drink it, sis um, So, yeah, so he moved in And in the start, it wasn't like 
there was nothing really weird. I think because the excitement of having like one of your best friends movie. Yeah, and of course. It was all wonderful. It was lovely. And it was like, yes, 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 this is so exciting. It didn't last long. Now, a few days into him even moving in, there was like a tiny red flag that I kind of just ignored. I was like, okay, maybe he's just a bit excited or whatever. Flag factory. Flag, so, a flag factory. So at the time I still worked in Morrison's and I was at work for the day and then I came home in the afternoon. I saw him standing on like a chair scrubbing like the cupboards on the oh, inside right of the cupboards. Then. And I was like, oh, I guess he's just cleaning whatever. And then I looked around and I was like, things have been moved. And he was like, just so bear in mind, there's the food is stuff moving in. He was like, yeah, I just moved everything around to make it easier for me. So now your food's in this one, all the stuff's in here, the cups are over here. And I was just like, <sighs> Like, this is a small thing. Like, this is just a small thing. But I was like, we've lived here now for over a year and Callum here for two years. We've always had the same cupboards. The mm -hmm. fridge has always been this layout. You've only just moved in and to move all of my stuff into a different cupboard because you've decided you want a different one. It was just a bit like you should have at least asked. Oh, because absolutely. I actually would have had no qualm of doing it. If you were like, is there any chance we can move it here just because- I love of that word, qualm. 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 Like if, 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 if he had just asked, I would have been like, do you know what? That's absolutely fine. Like I don't, I don't care. But it's the fact that it was done without anyone asking your consent. It was just like, yeah. mm, we've lived here for a while now. You can't just like- Do all that. Like just, yeah. uh, just ask, it's okay. As time went on, um, he definitely benefited a lot from the fact that he lived with me and Callum. We mm -hmm. both had substantially larger audiences on the internet mm -hmm. um, than he did. And I've never ever been the kind of person that's like, I'm not talking to you. You're too small. I'm not interested. Like we, I, I will happily make videos with anyone regardless of your size. If we have good chemistry on camera and we make good content together, I do not care whatsoever about your size. And so obviously I made a lot of videos, videos with him and he did gain a lot of our following. Like mm -hmm. they were bleeding, uh, bleeding out over to him, which again was absolutely fine. However, it got to a stage where like very quickly he started to feel like he was entitled to the success instead of actually saying he earned it or like he got it. Like it was, we would get like invited to events a lot. So we, we you know, me and Callum obviously would go to like pride stuff. We would mm -hmm. go to loads, loads mm -hmm. of screenings and everything. Mm -hmm. That's like kind of what we've been able to do for the past few years, which mm -hmm. I'm so unbelievably grateful for. And obviously he would always be the plus one. We would yeah, always bring him course. along with him. Cause you know, he was he, at the time yeah. he was, I was really close with him. So we'd bring him to things, but it got to a stage where he started getting like really arsy, like if he didn't get invited and it was like, but you haven't been invited to any of the stuff anyway. You're only coming cause we have brought you. Yeah, and he you're got, not the guest sis. Yeah, you're he the got this one. like, he got this like quite big level of like grandeur where he thought he was like so much more famous than what he was. And it just, it really started to bleed into his like personality. I know a become, few of those people yeah. sis. And he would get a bit kind of like, just very arrogant about things and very, I deserve this. I should like he got really annoyed that he didn't get invited to VidCon um Amsterdam. I didn't even get invited to VidCon Amsterdam. Obviously, I'm bastardizing a story. This is obviously spanned out over like an entire year. Yeah. But of it course. just gradually got worse and worse and worse. Where it was like to a stage where he wanted to just like slap him on the face and be like, Wait, You're not that big of a deal, sis. Like you're yeah. like this sounds nasty, but like no one knows who you are. It got to a stage where um, people kept telling me that he was mimicking me and imitating me and like basically becoming another version of me. And at the time I didn't really see it. And I was mm. like, no, we're just very similar. Yeah, we got yeah. the same personality traits. Yeah. And Callum started noticing it and being like, he's kind of just like copying everything mm. you do. And then um, I had other friends as well. We had multiple, basically none of our friends liked him. Everyone kept telling me like, we don't like him. I'm and I was like, no, yeah. no, it's fine. It's fine. Um, and then like, he got, he started like, serial dating people. And it's kind of like early 2017. He started like, Ooh. he was going for like relationships over and over again and getting really distraught over people. And I was like, I don't really understand what's happening with you. Like what's happening? Mm. But he did settle down with this one American guy. Almost instantly, this man had basically kind of like moved into the flat. Oh, He was no. over like 24 <clears throat> seven all the time. He wouldn't leave. And like, it's fine if you want to bring your boyfriend over, but like, if you're going to stay that much, you're going to have to start paying some kind of utilities. Like you mm. can't just stay in the house all the time using electricity and stuff. Mm. At the time as well, neither one of us had lots of money at all. Like I was still living on like tins of beans and stuff because yeah. I had no money at all. Like I was like, if you're going to start doing this, you need to start giving some money for the water because you're showering mm -hmm. every day. You're like using all of our stuff. Like that's just how living in London is, is yeah, like. Yeah, that's, that um, is just how it is. But the problem was, is he started to like morph into this, morph into him. He was like, I'm now learning violin. I'm now <laughs> learning Mandarin Chinese. I'm now a Muslim. And it was like, you've literally, uh, no, you've literally just That's like- That's a lot to undergo in like- It was in instantly. literally within, within weeks. He was all of a sudden turning into all these things. And it was like, I don't understand like what, what you're doing. Like all of a sudden you've now got these interests and all this. And it was like, he was really changing himself to fit with this man who mm. he'd just met. The stuff that really hurt was, he was my best friend. Yeah. Like 
I had two best friends at the time and it was Callum and him. And we were so close. Like he would come, like even before London, like before he moved to London, like we would visit each other all the time. We would constantly hang out. The first year that I lived in London, he and like all my other friends, like Electra would always come down and like my mm -hmm. friend Josh would always come and stay for like a week and mm -hmm. have so much fun. And as soon as he got this boyfriend, it was suddenly like I didn't exist. And after all the stuff that I'd done for him in that year, was I also the perfect friend? Absolutely not. I had yeah, my own course. moments, but everyone does. No one's a perfect human being. But like the way that he treated me when he got this boyfriend was just, just unacceptable. Mm -hmm. I, he just like acted like I didn't exist anymore. He would never ask me to go do things. I'd, if, if like we would ever invite him out to do things, he'd be like, oh no, I'm going off to see said person. We even had our friend Stefan come down from Germany. Now the first year we lived in London, Ger uh, Stefan lived in London. Mm. And he was here, he was a German exchange student. Well, not exchange student. He just came to, 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 visit, to study in London. So he was here for a couple of years. Oh. So when he left, we obviously really missed him. So he came and stayed and, you know, my housemate was like, oh no, I've made plans of blah, blah, blah. I'm going to go see him. And it was like, your friend here who you've not seen in over a year because he moved away has just come down to visit. Yeah, that's And so you've just weird. like ditched him for some guy that you can see any time in your life. And he just became so like obsessed with this man that he was just forgetting everyone else in his life. He started like slagging us off to people and like slagging us off to um, even Callum's parents, saying that we were like awful uh, to live with. Can you and imagine like, ever doing um, that? Saying that we're not cleaning things. There was one time that we were invited out to a dinner party at one of our friend's house and we had to bring, it was like each bring one meal together and we all yeah. eat together. Bring your own it, dish, girl. Yeah, it was really good. At the time our sink had broken. So we couldn't wash any dishes at the time. It was all broken. Um, So we had, we kind of just, after you made the food, we packed it all up and just kind of put, put it on the side because we were having a plumber come down, which I want to talk about as well. We had, we had a plumber mm. come down. Obviously he knew that this was the case, but like when we got to our friend's house, we got this really passive aggressive message from him saying, you could have at least cleaned up your stuff. And it was like, how? Am I supposed to wash it in the Smash bath? Smash it all on the floor. Smash. It was so, it Push was it so weird. Like, I don't, I was like, why are you fighting with us? But mm. like, you know, the sink, like we can't wash the dish because the sink is broken. Like, I don't mm -hmm. know what you're expecting us to do. And he would do that a lot. Like make these like really offhanded comments and like talk about us, about how awful we were to live with, live with. But then he, I remember one time, um, his, I think his, was it his sister? His sister and his sister's boyfriend was coming over to stay over at night. Okay. They came over, I was at work. I get this like shitty message in our group chat of me and Cal from me and Callum from him saying like, oh, I can't believe you've got all these dishes in your room. I needed to use them and now I can't use them. And I was like, what? Like we, that we had a lot of fucking yeah, cutlery in our house. There was a, a lot from like five different people who lived in the time who'd left stuff. We had a lot. And I was like, why are you like messaging me this? Like, it's such a trivial thing to message me. Why are you messaging it in a group chat as well where you're trying to get Callum to come at you're group meshing yeah. it in a group chat because you're trying to get Callum to turn on me too to be like, yeah. yeah, you shouldn't do it. Yeah. I come home and they have like got food out of everyone's stuff and eating. And like the, the plates that they said they needed to use, like were just in the dishwasher. Hmm. So this was just used as an excuse to be like, uh. yeah, it was really weird. And like I mentioned, obviously the sink was broken that we couldn't use water. So that's why we didn't use the yes, dishwasher. I just want to point that out. Yeah. Like, You've just said this dish, dishwasher. We couldn't use the dishwasher when the sink was broken because it was all stupid with the plumbing and stuff. But mm -hmm. the, yeah, so I was like, well, why have you like, why have you just like had a go at me for literally no reason for something you're saying you need to use them, but then you haven't used them. It was really weird. And he kept, it was like, he got mm. off on like shaming me in front of people. Yeah. And yeah, shaming yeah, us. Yeah. In, yeah, like, it was that, that, a, a, a almost like, sort of like yeah. I'm the important one here. And that happened all the time. So <laughs> it, 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 at this point, like I was already a bit like, I'm getting really pissed off with you now. Like I'm mm -hmm. stuck, like you're mm -hmm. not treating me like a good friend anymore. Mm -hmm. So the, the last thing that kind of like, snapped, again, so much more happened. I'm trying to like condense it. But one of the last things that happened was in 2017, uh, me and Callum were invited to go on the pride float. Mm -hmm. And so at this time, it was the first time they ever done like a pride uh, float for themselves. Cause it was always normally Google yeah. and YouTube people just kind of went along with Google. But this yeah. time it was like a dedicated one to YouTube. Me and Ooh, Callum, yeah, yeah. So me and Callum were invited and we went to this event and um, we, found out the, we found out about the float and everything. It was amazing. It was so much fun. And so I went to Kelly who was running it and I said to her, was like, is there any way that I could bring one of my friends? So I was like, although I was still kind of annoyed with him at this point, I was starting to get at the end of my tether. I was like, let's just do this together. Like we mm. haven't done anything together for a long time. I was like, I know that they will be fine with him coming. So I was yeah. like, can I bring him along with me? It's great. She said, yes. So the next event, we went into the YouTube space to find out all like the final plans about it. The first thing he says to me after we find out everything, he was like, I'm gonna go and ask Kelly if I can bring with me, like his, his boyfriend. And I was like, you're the plus one, sis. I was like, first of all, you're the plus one. Like, uh, me and Callum have brought you along here to be like, this is like a thing with us. Mm -hmm. Also, his boyfriend didn't have any social media, didn't do anything on YouTube. He was just like, 
just a guy. Just, 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 a guy. just, an, just an everyday person <clears throat> who has nothing to do with the internet. Doesn't, didn't even know, like, didn't know who we were, didn't know who any people at the event was. And it was like, I can't believe we have brought you along all this time it's to do audacity. this. It's the audacity. And it was like, you've just completely pushed us aside and been like, I'm going to go get my boyfriend on the float. And the problem was, is there was only a limited amount of space on this float as well. Mm-hmm. And for every single person that we brought in, a Google employee couldn't come. Mm. They had a list, they had a set, a set list of people. Also, one of our other YouTuber friends wanted to come and she wasn't able to go because people like he had invited other people along with them. So yeah. she wasn't able to go. Who's like, a mass, like a, YouTuber. a big YouTuber yeah. who was like, I just lost it at this point. And I was so upset. And on the day when the event happened, mm. he didn't spend a single day of time with us. The whole time he was just with his boyfriend. He even posted photos on his social media going, I'm out with blah, 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 blah. Had a great day. Like don't even acknowledge any of us was even with him after us bringing him onto the flow. And I was just like, you are just, at this point, I was like, you're not a good friend anymore. Like, no, absolutely not. And again, the, the ego that he had and he kept moaning about how all this, he wasn't invited to everything and how he deserved all the success and stuff. And it was just like, you're not humble. You were, you were just so arrogant at this point, like yourself. And I was like, I'm going to be your best friend. And you're just like, not giving a shit yeah, about me. And yeah, I've yeah, done yeah. so much for you over the years and I've brought you to so much stuff. And like, I'm not doing it to be thanked or something, but I'm like, I'd, ex- I'd ex- expect at least some kind of respect. Like, That's the thing, isn't it? Respect, yeah, respect. So we didn't speak for about, I think about a week after that because oh, I was really? I was so <laughs> angry with him. He went away for a few days and he came back and he just completely blanked me in the living room. And I just said, is this it now? You're just not going to say anything to me ever again. And he turned around and he was like, I apologize. The ball's in your court. I've done everything I can to make it right. He literally didn't do anything. And I just snapped. Like oh, I, I just blew up all this anger that I built up over the year. I just started screaming at him. And I was just like, I'm so effing sick of the way that you've treated me. You've completely deserted me. I'm supposed to be your best friend and all you've done this whole year is just shat on me. Like it was just unbearable. Mm -hmm. I just, all this pent up energy. Again, I want to stress, this is only a tiny portion of stuff that he had done over the year. There's so much more that happened that made me so angry. And I just flipped out and he just stood there with this like smarmy look on his face. Are you finished? And then walked away into his bedroom. I went back into the living room and I was just punching the table because I was so angry. Callum comes out in his bedroom going, what the hell's happening? And I was, I just couldn't stop screaming. I was like, that fucking... See you, Wendy. I was like, <laughs> I can't. I was like, and Cal- Callum was like, I knew this was coming. And yeah. I, wa- I walked him out. He was he was going out to the train station. So I walked to the train station. We just chatted. And it just never really repaired from there. He just absolved himself of yeah. the situation. And so at this point, me and Callum had decided that we wanted to move out and just live together. Um, and so we went our separate ways. I saw him a couple of times afterwards. And we did reach out to him. I wish I didn't. I don't know why I did this. Because like it... I, I don't think I processed in my mind what had happened until mm-hmm. like months afterwards. And like, I got really upset because I was like, suddenly this huge person in my life is now gone. And yeah. I just, started, yeah, I just yeah, suddenly yeah. started crying. And I went into Callum's room and I was like, I don't know why I'm crying, but I can't stop. And it just, all this emotion was coming out of mm-hmm. me. And we actually messaged him and said, uh, you know, is there any way we could see you sort things out? And it's stupid. I don't know why yeah. I was born to do it. Um, I was like, we missed you, blah, blah, blah. Just completely ignored. So well, at least they saved you from all this nonsense. Yeah. Because imagine if you had have invited that person back in. Yeah. They would have done the same thing um, again. Because people don't change. People don't change. And he, I mean, he did some awful things afterwards as well. He came to one of my panels at Sitsi and started like huffing and puffing and like eye rolling and making tutting sounds every time I spoke, which is really horrific. But I was like, you don't treat people like that. You do not. I just don't understand where you get this such an ego from. Like, how how do you? Convince yourself that you what you've got is like you've done it from scratch on your own and Delusion. not because like you've been brought along the way. Well, I see. The <clears> thing, <throat> the thing is, I feel like if you have genuinely earned what you have and you've you've pulled yourself through the fire of tribulations to get where you are and know where you're going, then you don't have this attitude because you know how much time and effort mm. and what it's cost you to get yeah. to where you yeah. are. Yeah. Whereas people that have a level of entitlement when they don't have like like you're not Mariah Carey. Mariah Carey can go on stage and be like, I don't know the words. Yeah. <laughs> Lol. Like that's fine. She's it doesn't get any better than this. Literally, <laughs> literally, literally. She's got like a billion, like I don't know, sell, platinum selling album, whatever it's called. Yeah. But it's like if you these people that don't have the the body of work to back up where they are, they fall apart very easily, and they yeah. latch onto people that have because they kind of feel like, oh well, they're talking to me, so maybe I must be something. Yeah, How really dare weird. you? They it- hate reality, and you represented to them a level of reality that they had not attained, and I, I feel like that's why jealousy, envy. I do think some of it is where he was from, he was from a small town, that he was like the star of the family because he was gay, 
you know, he he had, you know, he was he was a standout of the family because he was the only one that did kind of stuff that he did. Mm-hmm. And then when he moved to London, Big all of a sudden, all of a sudden, he was surrounded by LGBT people who were like much more successful than him and who was much more kind of like interesting and stuff. And I think he panicked, and I think he yeah. got this weird kind of in like I deserve it all. Yeah, and then, I'm doing the same thing. I could never imagine treating a no. friend the way that he treated the me. The idea of so there's something about there's something to say about these people that are like they're almost fickle with friendships, mm. and I'm always aware of people that are like fickle with other people because i'm like what is like what's really going on with you like why doesn't anyone talk to you why aren't people wanting to be seen with you what i think is crazy as well is like i've not mentioned him for years like years and years because this is this is 2017 so it's a long time ago when this Mm -hmm. all happened i've literally not spoken to him in years so when we found out that he had been gossiping and telling shit about me Mm -hmm. to the woman, like the woman. I don't understand how. Like, what are you doing? Like, yeah, yeah. It's 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 the same it's, thing though that that we came across the other day with somebody else being like, oh, it's the only person that's going to pay them attention, so they'll they'll sell everything they yeah, want and I make can't, up falsifications I just to get attention. Two different people from our past mm. that they they sought after and then said that they didn't sort after them. Yeah, it's obscene, absolutely obscene. It's one of those things that, like, I can really sympathize with you there because you don't mention these people by name you don't exactly think you don't waste I don't an even, iota I don't, of your brain exactly, power thinking exactly. about them they are a smudge of history zero, but they zero. have this funny way like rot of re-emerging don't they it's every weird, now and then like a cycle so of weird. It pestilence was, it was the fact that with your person he has no idea who I am no <laughs> <laughs> to literally to literally call me a snake it's like but you don't know me like you like I, i've met you like for like an Never. hour like an hour in my entire existence i met you for like an hour yeah and it was like That's you it. do not know me and you're like calling me a snake and how i don't represent youtube and how i don't know why i've like i've made nothing of my career on oh, youtube yeah, it's right. like yeah, so i'm more, succe- I'm more successful than you have ever been, been in your entire <laughs> life and you're like he does, uh, i don't know why they still do social media because they uh, haven't done anything with it uh, and it was like what are you talking about mm, guys if i even showed you one one or two percent of the things that we've had to be seen over oh, the past couple ridiculous. months you would fucking lose your shit ridiculous. i'm so glad i've got such a thick skin now i think gorgeous skin it's because ridiculous. if i didn't ridiculous awful hateful people but landlords <laughs> <laughs> so i suppose i shall share my little my little story shall i so this uh, is going to be based in 2015 okay uh, just before christmas uh, my ex and i were in a a place that we lived together and we were like, why don't we just like go into a house share to save some money to try and like buy a house in the future, you know? So we started looking in our local areas to see who we could move in with. Like what, what, like I'd never lived in a house share before where I haven't known people. So I was like, I don't really know like what to do and stuff. So we started looking for like, Bills, build, bills inclusive like house share yep. and stuff like this. We managed to find a really nice looking one. So was, I could never imagine you living with like a house share loads of people. You, can you never? I could, it seems like the most Untrue Unhinged. thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because you're so, you're so like I because after being friends with you for so long, I'm like, you could never survive with like four other people no. having to deal with all their stuff as well. Hate, hateful. <laughs> hateful. But I'm one of these people that's gonna end up in a castle by myself. <laughs> I don't want to see like, anyone else. With a mile long moat. So <laughs> <laughs> literally <laughs> cannons pointed at the door. That's me. The situation was kind of a little bit interesting from that point because we went to meet them and the people that were moving out gave us like a house tour and they were like so this is like the place and like we have access to the living room and the person that was moving out uh, taught um taught piano and so they paid a little bit more than everyone else because she was like well we use quite a lot of the living room and we just really liked this place because it was a bit cheaper than everywhere else so immediately i was a bit like in my naivety i've never shared a house before i was like oh cheaper that's best it was not best spoiler alert so this place had no double glazing because and we were like, oh well, it's, it's cheap. We'll cope with it. But it was freezing cold oh, all no. the time. It was dark. It was old. There was moth-eaten carpets that we didn't notice on our first Ew. like walk around. It's one of these things where and it was eight million pounds a month. Well, <laughs> no, it was only like six hundred pounds per month for a double room in a house share. So I was like, okay, in London, that's pretty You're good. very lucky. Yeah, very lucky. And also, if it's too cheap to be, if it's too good to be true, it probably is. Yeah, and I should have. Li- I usually listen to that kind of advice, yeah, but yeah, at yeah. this time I was like, no, we're saving girls. It's fine. After we signed the contract, which was just like an A3 sheet of paper, just like folded in half, like literally nothing in it, just being like, no pets, pay the rent. This is how much. Blah blah. blah. The landlady was called gay just gay like oh, gay wonderful. and i was like gay she was like when she first introduced herself she came up shook my hand she was like hi i'm gay and i was like <laughs> sorry what and she was like i'm gay so, I was like, so are you gay, gay now? now no but i was like 
So I then like after she'd left, I went I went to the, my housemate and I was like, did she just say she was gay? <laughs> like why did she why did she say that to us? She was like, and the person was like, no no no, that's her name. And I was like, what sort of weird is this? Well, from the 1700s, mm. gay means happy girls. You no, would never doesn't. call someone gay now, I guess. Ever. Like. Um, and so she came over at the end of the month being like, ah, oh, it's time for your rent. And we were like, yes, that's why we have your bank details. And she was like, no, no, cash only. Second red flag. I was like, what? Oh, red no, flag fucking. girls. Going to the bank and handing you 600 pounds in cash. But also banks don't let you draw out more than 250 per day. Yeah. So she was like, oh no. So what your other housemate does is go three different days of the week oh. and then get the money. And I was like, you dodge, 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 dodge. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So this, so absolute like tax evasion ladies. Oh yes. It started to come down to the fact that we were thinking, oh, maybe this isn't like the only place that they have that they own. Maybe this is like a thing that they do. Turns out several other properties were owned. I think they were a bit fiddle dee diddle dee dee. <laughs> <laughs> Fiddly washly <laughs> Curse moments Problems started to happen When we started to realise that Not only were they not making uh, well, Not only did they own like many other places Like none of the repairs were being kept up with It was all like very cheap and underground and stuff Like it was freezing cold um, We were like oh can we have the, the boiler stop working for some reason And it took like ages for them to get around to fixing it And it was actually a real problem Because we were like washing in like cold water and stuff And it's just like, I pay far too much to be living in London for all of this Actually also weirdly enough In the mornings there was always like a window open That couldn't quite close properly So this was in the kitchen There'd always be this silver cat just in the kitchen In the Meow, mornings girl. And I was, I, was I, I remember several times Were I you hallucinating? And just I jumped Because I was like <laughs> But it wasn't a little cat It was like It wasn't like a lion But it was like <laughs> It was like you know Like a, a sort of like a local cat That had clearly been fed by every neighbour A um, panther a, li- a panther was in my house Yeah uh, No but it was sitting on there And it kind of startled me And as I went like Bleh! And it like leapt at the window And like unhinged the window And like jumped through it And I was like Goodness, and I saw that cat so many more times in our house, and I was like, eh, I, like I love cats, but I'm also like, I don't really know like if this is a stray, like ill cat that yeah. I should be paying attention yeah. to. So that was weird enough because we couldn't close the window properly. Fast forward a little bit longer, the uh, the heating, we had the heating on for winter at one point because it was so cold. The boiler broke whilst the heating was on. Oh, so God. we had full solid heating, just getting hotter and hotter for five days. Because we couldn't get a gas person out to come and fix it. So we were just boiling to death in our house oh in the middle of winter for days. I remember the other housemate was like, I'm going to call gay and be like, I'm not paying this. I've never I'm never you topping you a kid <laughs> test again, basically. And we were like, oh, go sis, go sis, you do that. The um, thing is as well, like, why was this person not being like, oh, you're using up loads of heating that's going to cost me a lot of money, the fact that it's on 24-7. Well, this is it. So we were like, we're not paying for any of the yeah, energy that is stuck yeah. on it for as long as... Cause you, at first, they were like at first the landlady was like well why don't you just like get used to it and we were like oh my no, god what, what awful no. woman and, but then also she took the she took the windows out of one of the other housemates's window to get them replaced and they were like well where am i gonna stay and she was like yo you can stay on the sofa for like a few days and they were like no so she ended up paying for a hotel for that person for like two nights i think it was As it should be. when it came back there were no curtains and they were like how can i sleep and they were like oh you can close your eyes and it was like what are you doing this person was so like what the fuck so, the boat and i was like at this point we lived there six months before we moved the, out this woman sounds very much like why if you're so poor why don't you just sell your pearls and like literally it, it very that very... very that but i was also just a bit like like if i was doing something nefarious i would make sure that the people i'm doing something nefarious to would be so comfortable so that they wouldn't be like i'm gonna sell your story to someone you yeah. know what i mean like don't bite the hand that feeds you in yeah. any situation yeah. it doesn't make any sense yeah this is to the level where it's literally like you're expect- oh, you're just- gonna get exposed it's completely illegal completely illegal so um ended up moving out um and then my ex moved out as well uh was about three weeks later we got an email being like why are you all moving out? Why don't you think of your young new housemate? You can't leave them here in the house by themselves paying all the rent. And we were like, don't try and guilt trip us. Like, I don't know this person who's moved in. Also, I'm allowed to terminate a contract. And also, the thing is, I find it insane that they were like, they have to pay the rent themselves. I think it's really weird to say that because someone's decided to move out that you now have to pay well, what they are. Well, so this is just it. It wasn't classed as a house of multiple occupation, even though five people were living there. Uh, oh, so- that was, it clearly was some kind of tax event. Absolutely. Or money laundering and or you know something. Do you know what's even worse? Do you know what's even worse? Do you know what's even worse? Um, so this because this had not been redecorated since the 60s, there was an outhouse 
an outhouse. An outhouse, an outhouse which was a, a bathroom outside the house. Um, and there was a bathroom inside as well. But it was advertised to us as a two bathroom property. Oh, that is ah! not. That is not a bathroom. If you have to go to the garden to go for your little midnight tinkles, that is isn't not a bathroom. Isn't it so weird that the olden days had like out, had like your bathroom is outside? It's bizarre, isn't it? I don't, I like, how did you cope in winter being like, oh, I need a p- tinkle? So, a well, bed when, <laughs> when, when, so when I used to live with my mum, and this was like the, in the early 90s, we had an, a house, but there was an outhouse in it. But, but to make it modern, they had like built the outhouse into the house. Okay. So it would have been an outhouse that was like in the side of the garden. Okay. But what they did is they extended the, the house over it. Oh. So like it, then they added the toilet, which made it a two toilet thing. But you still have to go outside to get into it. So no. So no? they basically just extended this wall that was here that, oh, to go out on the side of it. So all of a sudden it was really weird because it was like really disconjointed. All of a sudden it was like, it went from like sort of like the cementy um, smooth side to brick. It was so weird. It was quite clearly just like stuck on the end, but it, that was their way around that. Oh, yeah. That sounds glamorous. Very glamorous. glamorous. Yeah. yeah, no expense spared. Yeah. <laughs> Fast forward, we were moving out. I got that email. And then literally like a couple of days later, I got an email because CC'd into it was all the other housemates. Yeah. And I was like, I'm not going to respond to anything. I'm just going to watch the drama unfold. And um, the other housemate was like, I don't think you understand that we're moving out and we're moving out because of all this terrible thing that's going on. And me and this housemate didn't really get along anymore at that point. But I did agree with them about this. So you um, beat them to I death. I beat them to death. And then two weeks later, same email again, being like, you must think about this oh, young new off. housemate. And I was like, you, when you, what you are trying to do is make us go, oh, oh there's yeah, their first yeah, time in yeah, London. Yeah. Really look after them. Yeah. You don't know no, them. No, also... It's your job as a landlady to find other tenants for yeah. your place. We didn't go through an agency. It was just directly to landlord, which now I also know is another massive red flag. Yeah. So always vet who you're going to move in with and always make sure you look at the edge of the carpets yeah. to make sure they're not mothy. <laughs> look at the edge of the carpets. Look at the yeah. edge of the carpets, girls. Oh, it was awful. I really did not. So I never in my life now will I do like a house share with people I don't know. No. But I'm... even then, I think even with people I do know, I'd be like, there's that phrase, isn't there? It's like you don't never know someone until you live with them. I I kind of that's the thing you never you because I generally believe that when that, that I would get on really well with them. But mm-hmm. yeah, when you live with them, different. But like I I think now like if I was ever not to live with someone, I think I would actually just accept that I'd have to pay a bit more money and yeah. just kind of bear with it and just live on my own. Yeah, I same. couldn't I couldn't imagine, especially because like doing the jobs that we do, living with people who don't understand the internet, it really makes like a a friction divide because they're like, why are you setting up cameras in the living room to film? What are you doing? Why are yeah, you why filming are you doing? everything you're doing? Like, yeah. it, who, people who don't understand the internet, I find it really difficult to like... Explain. Yeah. They don't have a, a, a like an innate knowledge about it yeah. because it is something that we learn to do but it's also something we learn to do when no one knew about yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. When you say you're a YouTuber, people are like, oh, so you're, you're an escort. Yeah. Yeah, like, no, <laughs> I'm a YouTuber. <laughs> oh, what's all that? Yeah. Like, no, you can get paid for all that. <laughs> you're an escort. <laughs> do you know what I hate when people ask you how much money you make? Isn't that so? I mean, I understand like talking about money in terms of like at a company to make yeah. sure that they're not diddling everybody out of money. But like as a self-employed person, please don't demand to yeah, know to, my money. To, 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 to go up to some because it used to happen all the time when I still worked at Morrison's, and I'd be like, "Yeah, I did YouTube? I get I get paid for it. I'm gonna make a full-time job at some point." They always be like, "How much money are you making?" And it was like, "Am I asking your salary? Yeah, I'm asking your you wage." Just made something up. And be like, "Oh, I earn seven million pounds yeah, a I'm month. A- I just work at Morrison's for the atmosphere." <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I don't understand why people think it's okay just to ask how much money you make. Such a weird thing. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's really acceptable for self-employed people. So talking about, uh, remember I said about the sink and I was like, I'm going to refer oh, yes. to the plumber. So when our sink broke, obviously the building management, they were taking care of all this kind of mm-hmm, stuff. So we just contacted mm-hmm. them and been like, can you send over a plumber, Help please? Girls. Help, girls. I need my plumbing sorted. Look at girls. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> so uh. we were... It was really it was Mario. It was Mario, yes. Um, so we were really. It was really early in the morning. I was maybe say about like half seven, mm. maybe eight. Um, why is it always that plumbers do this? I why don't know. They come always at like time? half seven. And I didn't hear the door go because I was still in bed, and I assumed that like w- the, basically the door opened and someone came in. I thought then when I woke up that it was like Callum or the other housemate yeah. just like walking around or something. I suddenly hear about five minutes later shouting in the living room. <gasps> what happened? What the is this lazy? Oh, this is disgusting. What are these people doing? It was so bizarre. Callum comes out of his bedroom, comes into my room and goes like, what the fuck is happening? Yeah. Like whispers to me like, what, what's happening? And I was like, I don't know what's going on. And I was like, what? And I kind of just woke sort of half asleep still. And like Callum walks into the living room and 
sort of turns his head and goes, what the hell is happening? Because it's yeah. just like the yeah. plumber man's in the living room. And at the time as well, we didn't realize that he was like, that's who it was. We, yeah. uh, we were just confused. A stranger was in the house. Like, yeah. Shouting. Home intruders. This man just like turns around to Callum and was like, what is this? And it was like, what do we want? And he like held up this like, I, I mean, I actually don't know what it was. It was like some kind of food that was like trapped inside one of the pipes. Yeah. And no, he was like, I don't know. Oh, it's, what is this? And Callum was like, what? Like, first of all, who are you? Yeah. And I'm like, why are you shouting at me in my own home? Like, <laughs> what are you doing? He's like, I don't know what that is. Like, multiple people are in this house. Like, I don't know what that is. Yeah. And I think in that moment, the plumber suddenly was like, oh shit, I've just realized what I'm doing. Like, mm. shouting at someone in his own. And all of a sudden, he just kind of stopped and was like, oh, um, uh, um, uh, uh. It was so awkward. And then oh. he tried to like say, oh, I'm just trying to fix it. Uh, I wasn't uh, trying to be loud. And, and I got really angry at this point. And I was like, you fucking was shouting yeah. at my housemate. Um, and then he kind of like panicked and was like, oh, oh. And then we rung up the people and got him um, taken away and stuff. Arrested. But it was, it was, I don't know what happened after us, but it was like, what are you doing? Like going into someone's like house and then like screaming? Literally. Like, it's like, what are you doing when people aren't actually there? Literally. But also as a, as a, like a stranger going into people's houses, I'm sure you're taught a level of professionalism that's not go immediately in their house and yell at them. Oh, mm. mummy's got pissed off. Oh, <laughs> and golden. <Stammer. laughs> but it was so weird that I would never forget that. It was so strange. Like coming into our house and then like, just like screaming, saying that we're lazy and disgusting because this item had like found its way into the drain. I had no idea what the hell it was or how they even got down there. It was like something must have fit down the little tiny hole and kind of expanded. This is the thing. And like it would maybe just a tiny bit of food that was on, mm -hmm. like not even thinking someone was just washing a plate and a bit of like food went down the plug hole. And it was like, you're literally screwed. Like this is your job. Yeah. Yeah. Like where's the professionalism? Your sis? job is to fix drains. And like, I'm sure you found a lot worse inside a drain than a bit of food that's like swollen up. Mm. Like, and you're sc literally screaming, what is this? That's disgusting behavior. Like, just like holding it up in front of Callum's face going, what is this? It was like, what are you doing? This like actually, you've just sparked a memory of something in my mind that's so funny now thinking about it. I still don't know how it happened. Um, I'm gonna also tell another story about um, when I first moved to London in with Sinestra. Talking about plumbing and weird things like that. I'm always one of these people that's like, if there's a problem that I think I can fix, I probably will. So I have like a toolkit at my house. When we first moved in, it was absolutely fine. And then like just a couple of months later, um, Sinestra was like, the, the, the sink isn't working. And I was like, as I was, I was just about to say, I'm one of these people that can, uh, I always want to like fix whatever's wrong without yeah. going to a professional immediately. If it's obviously, if I'm like, no, I did like electronics or anything like that, I'm like, go to a professional. I don't want to kill myself. But when it comes to like, if there's a blockage in the U-bend, like you can easily fix that by being like, unscrew this, clog out the U-bend, put it back in. And I've even, I've even started like rebalancing boilers because that's, yeah, I know, the pre repressurize the boiler girl. We had this mysterious like blockage of the sink and I was like, what is this? What's going on? So um, Sinestra was like, I don't know anything about sinks. And she was like, oh, you have to call the landlord. And I was like, I'm just going to have a little investigate. And I like, after like draining the excess out of the sink and like moving everything out of the sink. And uh, so I started to un unblock it and I got out the little U-bend and I looked down it. There was a whole, <laughs> there was a whole hard boiled egg. <laughs> how? I, I don't know how it got down the plug without like shattering. It was like someone had boiled an egg and put it in this pipe. And I was like, <laughs> what kind <laughs> of x foul shit is this? I actually held it out to the and was like, why is there an egg? I'm so and she was so confused and I was so confused. All I could think of is maybe we made food when we were drunk and like tried to <laughs> You are insane. And I have no idea. No I idea. How did you all. fit a fucking egg down it the It was plug? like a whole egg. It was maybe it had like reformed or half cooked or something and then just like solidified over time, but it looked like a whole hard boiled egg. And after that I just screwed everything on and the sink was fine. But I was like, we need to stop putting eggs down. <laughs> <laughs> this is why the UK needs those like waste disposal things oh, that are in like uh, Although America. I'm always, always aware of like dropping a ring and being like, time to have my arm eaten by the garbage. Bye girls, Good time to bleed. Mm. I had well, someone I used to work with had the same story as you, by the way, about the money and the landlord asking for money. Honestly, it's she not lived in rare. a house with about six different people, and it was also one of those places where they're like, we don't have a living room, we've converted it into another bedroom. Oh, it was yeah. like, no thanks. But yeah. she she used to pay around about so much money as you, mm. and the the, the mum the man was always like. Slumlord. 
lords. Yeah, the man was always like, we need it in cash. It was like, you're money laundering or something. Money laundering, absolutely yeah. money laundering, tax evasion. So when I first moved to London with Sinestra in 2010, it was around Christmas time. Lots of my stories are like Christmas themed. I don't know why. It's just very appropriate, it seems. Jingle so, bells, I've, I've got, got gout. So back in 2010, in the winter of 2010, we had a huge snowfall in London. Really, really rare to have it and lay and actually be like a big deal. Me and my friend Rebecca went sledding that year. Did you? Amazing. In Devon, it was so thick. Literally, that's that's kind of like the last time that I really remember like a deep snow. that We've not had it like that for a long time. It was literally like weeks. And I remember, I actually remember coming back from a club in like massive platform heads being like, I'm gonna die on the (laughs) snow drift, girls. Oh, it was awful. But... One of the first situations that happened. So we, I loved the place that we moved into. It was a duplex apartment with a spiral staircase that was actually really big for what it was. I never really realized how lucky I was until I look back now and I'm like, wow, I was paying less than I was paying at that awful place I've just talked about. I with used to watch your videos back in the, obviously back, back mm. when you were making videos there and always going like that house looks amazing. Oh, it was so, it was built really badly and quite cheaply, but the the space and everything was so good and I've got such fond memories of it because it was like where I blossomed into yep. the woman I am Ooh. today. It was so fun, so fun. But when we had all that snow drift, one day, Sinestra and I were like upstairs and as as we um like exited our rooms and uh, was like sort of doing like morning routines and whatever, we were like, can you smell? What's that smell? It's very, it smells a bit moldy. Oh. What's all that, girls? And we were like, what is that? We An come entire downstairs. corpse. Yeah, <laughs> a, a giant necromancer <laughs> in the living room. No, so we came down the little stairs and we were like, where is that coming from? Where is that coming from? And like, as you pressed on the, f- it was not like floorboards, but it was like, like laminate flooring, there, there was this squelch. And I was oh, like, no. what is that? What is that? Disgusting. And it turns out that like something underneath the floor had like moved or something. And all this snow like fall probably oh. had frozen a pipe and then it had like exploded. exploded. It yeah. And it was just like squelching through the floor. And we were like, this is absolutely foul. Called the landlord. Was it sewage? No, no, no. It wasn't. It was just smelling a bit like watery, like a little bit mold, Dampness, like, water, like, like dampy, smell. Yeah, dampy, yeah. watery, yeah. watery, damp. Uh, <laughs> dampy, <laughs> watery, 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 and damp. damp. <laughs> New merch coming soon. Yeah. <laughs> and called the landlord, and they were like, uh, uh, you know, like as landlords are always <laughs> like, I, I don't, don't want to have to do anything. It's actually, really a problem. So it's like the first time you speak to a landlord, you're like, hello, nice to be your tenant, blah, blah, blah. The next time you speak to them, you're like, as per Article 4 of the Housing Act, do your job. And it was just literally like that. And they eventually sorted it out. Someone came around and like did the flooring. We didn't have any like bad rain or any bad snow after that. So we mm-hmm. didn't really know that it wasn't actually fixed until April came around and we had all the April showers in like 2011. It was like really wet. Usually after like a snowy winter, you have a wet spring. Oh, I know I'm a prophecy woman. Um, so we had the same problem again and we were just like, I can't be bothered like talking to the landlord. So we actually just lived with it for like a week and then it went away. But I was like, we're moving Imagine out. Imagine if like the floor out. actually split open all Literally. of a sudden that just was spewed out of there. a sinkhole maybe. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> Absorbed completely. But there were so many other weird things that happened in that apartment. Oh, oh but also let me tell you another thing just before we moved into that place. We were looking to live in Bethnal Green. I don't know if you, are you familiar with Bethnal Green in London? So that's where my friend used to live where she had the landlord who was like, give me money. So I, I'm not surprised about that mm. because the first place that me and Sin went to look at when we were moving to London was a place in Bethnal Green. And we walked up the high street and I was like, it's very specific in Be- in Bethnal Green. I didn't exactly feel very safe just because it was a bit like, so that area of London has quite a high crime rate. And being someone who sticks out like a sore thumb in a place with high crime rate is not actually that nice. Mm-hmm. Probably shouldn't really do all that. So we walked uh, up the high street on the way to look at the place and someone peeped out of like a, a restaurant and was like, oh, what are you two up to? And we were like, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm just, we're just looking for houses. And this guy was like, sort of clocked that maybe I was androgynous at the time and was like, if you were in my country, I'd cut your head off. Oh my God. Can and I was imagine? like, I'm not in Brighton anymore. No. I was like, oh, we this is dangerous. Told her we ain't in Kansas anymore. anymore. <laughs> but I literally looked over to Sen and I was like, I don't care how nice this, this place is we're going to look at. I'm... I've never been told I'm going to have my head cut off before. Yeah. I want to go on to a couple of stories mm. that I have found on Red Watelier. So I went on to Reddit and I want to, because obviously I was like, let's just add a few little other people's stories yes. as well to, to the equation. Just so we don't sound just completely bonkers yeah. by ourselves. <laughs> Bonky wonky. So I have found a couple of stories. Now I'm going to read you this first one first. Mm. And now it is uh, disgusting. Oh, is it? oh, I can't wait. 
So this was posted on Reddit um, and it's a woman called Lady Jane. Oh. And they've said, my old roommate was dating a good friend of mine. One day after spending the night, they went out for lunch. His dog came out of his room with the tissue in her mouth. I stopped her, grabbed it and went to throw it out. When one of my, <laughs> when in my hand, it suddenly felt really wet. It was a condom, <gasps> fully loaded. And when, <gasps> I, <laughs> and when I grabbed it, I guess I squeezed it oh, no! because my hand was now covered in his semen oh. in my roommate <laughs> it's been <laughs> it's been years and i still haven't told them about it that is disgraceful that is disgraceful that poor little dog was like a new toy <laughs> and it was like a condom full of semen filled with semen oh how awful don't just don't don't bother doing our shares <laughs> absolutely oh. disgusting as well oh Poor thing, disgusting. Oh. I don't think I've ever had like anything, anything like just like gross, disgusting like gross. Happen. Like, like I've had happen. a few like ill things, but like never anything that's like full on like that. Like that's way too. That's much. like biohazard. Yeah, yeah, like that's absolutely disgusting. I don't think I've ever had anything like that happen. I don't really want to. Either. If you, if you, by the way, guys, if you are still watching this now, if you're watching the video version of it, um. Uh, make sure you comment down below some of your own personal stories oh, that you please. might have from horrible landlords or you know awful housemates and maybe we can include them into like a part two at some yes, point definitely I think we also should start thinking about like reading the subscribers is nonsense stories about blah because some of you guys have the most wild stories in the comments and I'm like fully gagged every yeah. time I read them so I found this little one that's also quite appropriate for London okay so they call they're called Pizimo. And it was written two years ago and it starts with, I rented a place in zone four. I wanted to get a phone line put in. Yes, it was that long ago. So I called BT to arrange it. They said they had no record of our flat. Checked other places with the council and they and and then we found out why all the bills were included. The house had been illegally divided into three flats and oh. the landlord hadn't told anyone. <gasps> so no one knew where, that we were living here. So after a whole month after we moved in, we got in contact with a theatre fire officer, which I guess is like people that come around and are like, oh, is it fire safe? Yeah, yeah. Um, we both worked in the theatre to inspect the flat. They wrote a report detailing every breach of fire regulations. Oh my god! We went to the landlord, and they said if they didn't release and said if they didn't release us from our contract and return our deposit, we would report them to the council. The, the landlord immediately released them and returned the deposit, but they reported it anyway. But what I don't understand with those kind of things is like you know that you are going to get caught. Yeah, how long can you operate in a legal house for? Like realistically, like that is that is you are go like I don't understand the risk. Like, it's just not worth the risk. Like you are li you are going to get caught. And the thing is also is that these landlords that do this. Just like the stories earlier that we have, they're never usually like nice people that want to try and keep the deal sweet. They're yeah. always like arseholes that are like, yeah. uh, uh, I'm entitled to your that's money. Like, that's like if you're doing something that's this uh, like this illegal, make sure do not sweet. piss off the people yeah, exactly. who are like helping Be you. So like sickly sweet that when your tenants leave, they're like, that was the best experience I've ever had. Yeah. Otherwise, you straight in the bin. Straight, straight in the, the bin. bin. Straight in the straight in the garbage chute. So this is actually posted seven years ago. Oh, disgusting. Sickening. My roommate was pretty was a pretty shy dude. He didn't talk a lot, only had one friend and spent most of his time playing Halo. <laughs> what sounds like you? With one <laughs> <laughs> shut up, shut up. <laughs> Eventually, towards the end of the year, he got a girlfriend. Oh, it doesn't this... sound like you anymore. No. Oh, <laughs> I had many girlfriends. Uh, yeah. I'm having one right now. Uh, you're my girlfriend. <laughs> This was his first girlfriend, and I think it was her first boyfriend, too. So they had a weird way of showing intimacy. For example, she would regularly spend an hour or more popping zits on his back. He had back knee. Also, he, okay. once, t also, he once told me that when... <laughs> Oh, when either one of them would have a poo, the other would sit in the bathroom as to keep the other one comfortable. Oh, they oh. would also sometimes hold hands while doing it to prove how close they were to this each other. This can't be legitimate. This is insane. The thing is, <laughs> so far, I when me and Callum did a video about other straights okay a long time ago, there they was do things there like was this. two posts of these. There was one post of this, this girl and her boyfriend literally in the toilet doing it at the same time, like pooing at the same time and going like, if you can't do this with your partner, you're a shit partner. Oh. And no pun into you're a shit partner. Uh, um, <laughs> oh, so they would also hold gross. hands. It mostly didn't bother me. How that not, mostly not bother you? It mostly didn't bother me. But one time I walked into a living room and he covered his junk up really quickly with a pillow. I thought I'd walked in on a hand job or something. So I was like, oh, sorry, I'll get out of your way. Which they responded with, no, it's not what you think. I was just trimming his pubes for him. In the living room. In the living. Oh, you the disgraceful peasants! On, 
<laughs> Seriously, he doesn't even have a boner. They were weird. They were weird. Well, you can say that 18 times. Can at the you top imagine of your lungs. ever doing like no, never. I also think like, how are you that out of touch to not know that that's inappropriate? Yeah, literally. If you if you have your own place and it's just you two two living together, you do go whatever you, do you want. Love. You want to trim your pubes on the balcony? Go ahead and do it. But, but like. But it's like, it, it was like how she was trimming his as well. It wasn't like he was doing his own. Really bizarre. Oh, grim, 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 grim. But like, the, I'm to be honest, or I have all that that I'm more concerned about. We hold each other's hands while the other one shits because it shows us how close we are. That's weird. You could, I could, I could be like so close to someone and never be like, oh, should we do that this afternoon? No, absolutely no, absolutely not. No, no, absolutely no, not. No, absolutely not. No. No, never. No, 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 there's no gout. So this next story I have is also from two years ago and is written by Hamster Noir. As a student, there was only one letting agency that fucked over everyone with returning deposits. This was before the tenancy protection thing. Do you remember that happening? No, I don't. So now we have something called like my deposit or whatever, and you don't give your deposits to the letting agency. You give it to like a separate company that looks after them. Oh, so they know I'm sure they're all all in with each other's pockets. They Mm -hmm. usually are. So this person says, I got stung that once. So after that, I just started to withhold the last month rent and would offset that against the deposit, which is what I hear a lot of people doing because landlords can sometimes be really scrupulous with your deposit. Like, oh, Mark, we need the whole floor redone. Concrete everything. We had to dispute a couple of things when we moved into this space because Mm -hmm. do you remember that? You never saw the white rug that was in our old house? Yes, I did. Yes. When we first moved in, it was so disgusting like, it was mm. so disgusting we took it out put it instantly and bought our own rug and they tried to like charge us for it it was like no sis just even no. go look go look, look back at your photos when you come yeah. to, you come to look in the first day the inventory disgusting. girls yeah it's disgusting isn't it um yeah so they offset that against the deposit and whilst this isn't the worst it's quite cool the other half had been paying a flat paying for a flat and paid a deposit for one month rent we then decided to move in together and found a house through the same letting agent in a moment of weakness they let us transfer the deposit from one to the other instead of paying for a new one even though the new deposit would have been just over double when we did eventually end the tenancy they returned that deposit and they assumed what would have been a higher deposit so we got a few hundred pounds out of them oh wow this is taking a turn, hasn't it? As a bonus, the landlord sold us the house at a good rate as well. Oh. Ooh, seems like there is what's that light over the L- light, rainbow? No, it is no, no it is, is, light at the end of the light end of the tunnel. <laughs> light at the end of the gout. Yes, I'm gonna have to bleep what you just said for YouTube. <laughs> Wait, it began with a G, not yeah. a C. No, no well, it, sa- it sounded very C. I was actually explaining a Finnish word. A Finnish for the ge- ceiling at night. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about things like deposits and stuff. When we were lived in Stratford before we moved here, well, the house previous to this yeah. one, we that other house. First of all, housemate Kieran originally painted one of the walls bright orange. You weren't allowed to change any of the walls, and he no, just you never paint, are. He painted the wall orange. I had like blue tack marks all over oh, my wall. It was horrific. Geez. They would have to repaint the entire thing because I was stupid at the time. I was so yeah, stupid. Like, no, um, yeah. And like obviously from the t- the people who lived there before us as well. You know there were marks over the walls. There were some scuff marks and broken girls. stuff. And we, there was no way that we were going to get our deposit back. There was mm. like broken, even the, the table was broken. When we moved to the house before this one, we got an email from them expecting it to be like, Awful. Oh, <laughs> so you're not going to get the money back, Mm-mm. girl. And they said, um, so because you posted so many lovely things about living in the East Village, we're not going to charge you anything for moving and oh. you're going to get all of your deposit back. And it was just because Callum posted a lot of time where we... Oh. Because we used to live in a place called the East Village mm. and he would post a lot of the time being like, oh, it's the nice East, East Village, Village. lovely. Um, and because he had posted and obviously we said nice things about them, they like wavered all costs and gave us Amazing. everything back. Amazing. Oh, well, you never hear about that? No, often, you do don't. You? No, not when it comes to housing. Everyone's like, more money. And then hearing what they were like, no, you you dirtied up the yeah, rug. No, and it was like, you no, put a scum mark I'm on not the rug. I'm not spending a hundred pounds. I'm not spending hundreds of pounds on a rug that you, that was disgusting before we even moved in. Literally, one of the, uh, so talking about deposits again, in one of the places that, um, we lived previously, there were high heel marks in the floor. Before we'd even moved in, there were high heel marks on the floor. You know, like laminate really just like, if, yeah. you, if you wear any heels, it's just like stamps into the floor. Um, and, and when we moved out, they tried to be like, we're going to have to redo the entire floor. But they just had people move in like three days after we moved out. So they tried to charge us for putting a whole new laminate floor in like the living room and the kitchen. 
but they'd already moved new people in, so they wouldn't have had any time to do it. <laughs> and we were like, I, I literally was like, as per the housing act, that's you're not doing mm-hmm. that, lovelies. That is not happening. I think what happens and is I a argued lot, with them out of that. A lot of the time, they probably think you don't know the rules, so oh, they think absolutely. you're just going to be like, yeah, it's okay, yeah, yeah, don't, don't like, sue I'm me. I'm scared. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm literally not scared. No. Once you find out that, like, I don't know, if there's a lot of uh, landlords or not made landlords, maybe if there's like agents, like housing agents or letting agents in the. Uh, comments below you may be privy to this but some even some landlords uh even some letting agents skip the referencing but still charge you for it did you oh, know this disgusting. at least it used to be back when you had to pay for it rather than the the landlord themselves yeah yeah they would skip it and be like oh the referencing's been done you can just move straight in even, i've had it happen twice anyway guys yes if you have any stories you want to share with us about your hateful landlords hateful tenants hate, hateful, hateful housemates, housemates whatever it is deposit yeah. dealing maybe we, maybe we can make a part two of this in like yes. a few months and we could do like you know a, a reading yeah. yes. personal stories of, from gout. gout from from, from the gout from from the comment section the um, gout. But yes. thank you so much for watching. Thank you so and much. if you are listening on SoundCloud, thank you, thank you, thank you for listening, or thank iTunes, you. or Spotify, all the other good places. Mm. Um, make sure you do hit the like button, subscribe, obviously, notification bell, so don't miss any other videos yes. that are coming up. And we will have another podcast episode out very, very soon. We will, we will, probably in the new year by now. Yeah, we, by the, yeah, we, we, see you next year, girls. Mid January. So happy holidays. Yes, happy Hope you have holidays. a wonderful time. Mm. Um, and thank you for all the love and support you've given us this year. This podcast has done so well. It has. Um, and so, the idea that so many people were like, it's in my Spotify. It's number one like, yeah, podcast that I was insane, like what? insane insane amazing considering as well we've only been doing it properly for about like a year and a bit yeah. to be like their number one most listened to is amazing That's so incredible thank you so much for all the love and support it thank means you. it means absolutely everything mm-hmm. anyway yeah gosh we'll see you very soon yes we will bye guys bye beautiful mm.